What is up my bodyweight warriors, welcome back. Today is going to be a different kind of video, I'm just going to give you a training vlog, much like the vlogs I did before, except just focused around a training session on this day. So this is the first episode of which, so there'll probably be some raw training footage and a voiceover of what's going on, what I'm doing, what I'm thinking. So I just wanted to share that with you, hopefully you guys enjoy, on to the training. At the beginning of all of my training sessions, I like to just kind of play around and have fun as you were seeing there in the kind of intro clip. I have been starting off with juggling lately to try and get my hand-eye coordination like zoned in. And it's quite just like a fun thing to play around with and learn new stuff um, where I can. As well as that juggling, I usually practice some sort of hand balancing at the beginning, warm up with something a little bit more low intensity and then maybe do some sort of press and then also one arm handstand movements, which is something that I kind of set myself as like a little background goal for 2017. Um, so I'm just gonna be working towards every session, a little bit of work here and there, trying to improve my one arm handstand. Um, and I guess we'll kind of see where it's at. I mean, now uh, I'm cheating a little bit with the way I'm positioning my legs and I'm not really getting as much of a hold as such, but it's definitely just something that's fun to play over at the beginning of a session. I usually spend like 20 to 30 minutes just experimenting and playing with different movements before I actually jump into my programmed training. Uh, I've also been playing around with some tumbling. I think you may have seen in some Instagram posts. I'm not uh, the best and this is like three weeks of not tumbling at all. So it's not great. Um, but again, this is just something that's like fun, a little bit of exploration, seeing what your body can do. So we jump into the beginning of the workout, um, as well as doing the usual kind of warm up, which you will find in the Bodyweight Warrior program at the beginning. Um, I also like to throw in the skin the cats, especially on my straight arm days, which is what you'll be watching here. Um, I really find they're very, very effective at warming up the shoulders and especially the biceps for that straight arm work that we're gonna be doing in this session. After I've warmed up, I like to kind of experiment just with some max effort attempts. So here's kind of like a pike straddle, um, kind of maybe a one second hold. Uh, and then also the full front lever, which I've kind of ticked off at the end of last year. I can pretty consistently get five second uh, full front lever holds, which I'm happy with. So in terms of working sets, I'm going for an intensity phase at the moment. So the reps are pretty low, but the intensity is very high. So here I'm going for kind of an advanced frog position tuck planche. Um, and that I'm holding for between six and eight seconds. We are pairing that planche work with some front lever work, and for the front lever, I am using a mechanical advantage pull. So this is where you use an easier progression to pull up into the inverted hang, and then you go down in a harder position that you can just about hold uh, as a slow eccentric. So we're kind of working for one rep up, nice and explosive with an easier progression and then kind of a six to eight second eccentric down in a harder progression. Uh, you also see that my throne is in front of me for all of these uh, planche holds. I really do find that it's good for keeping you honest and focused actually of how long you're holding those planche holds for uh, and, and really kind of quantifying your progression rather than just kind of guessing. Perfect. Oh, background. <laughs> All right, mate. How long have you been training? One semester. One semester. That makes you want to cry. <laughs> so 
So after being shown how it's done by my friend who's literally been in gymnastics for like three or four months, which is pretty crazy, um, I moved on to my next pairing, which is press two handstands and some 360 pulls. Before I do the pressed handstand, I like to make sure my straddle is mobilized for the press because it makes the movement a hell of a lot easier. Um, I am going for three reps in one set, kind of up and down into that straddle, really focusing on just kind of maintaining that load on the shoulders and that ability to push back up. This definitely transfers well over into the planche uh, and I'm just trying to get stronger. <laughs> uh, Although my form in this is not that good, as you'll see, I'm kind of struggling and almost uh, half repping in a sense that I'm not really letting my feet come down far enough. We're gonna be pairing that, as I said, with the 360 pull, which is one of my favorite lever exercises at the moment. Um, I like to have my palms facing down when I turn through the 360 pull. So here I would switch my hands around turn them to face down at the ground and that's going to help bring in more of the postural muscles which will transfer over to the pressed handstand and the planche as well. This exercise though is just really great for front lever, back lever, conditioning the elbows for straight arm work. Um, it's very adaptable as you can just you know use any progression of the front and back lever so tuck, advance tuck etc. Jumping back into the press to handstands, um, here I decided to go for cluster sets instead of the reps on their own. So I wanted to look for quality of movement here. So I was just aiming to get three reps of a press to handstand, nice and controlled, somewhat good form and a nice controlled eccentric. Um, as you can see though, kind of fatigue was building up at this point um, and my last rep was a little bit of a grind, but that's fine when we're kind of drilling these advanced moves, you kind of want to push it on those last few sets. When we jump back into the 360 pulls, I just wanted to like highlight my hand position again, just because it makes a big difference. You can keep your sort of hands in the same position with the palms facing up instead. But as I said, it has that kind of transfer over to the planche and the pressed handstand and also conditioning the biceps when you do turn them around. But make sure you take this one carefully, guys. It can be quite intense on those tendons. After we've done our strength work, it's kind of Time to jump into some prehab. I like to throw in some external rotation at the end of my sessions. Uh, one of my favorites at the moment are called LYTPs. This is the L movement here, which is essentially a Cuban rotation with some weight. With all of these movements, you're kind of focusing on isolating that scapula. So you want to retract your scapula back uh, and then really focus on performing the movement with good form. Uh, we're going to be performing five reps in each position and then on the last rep we're just going to hold it for a couple of seconds um, just to really squeeze and focus on the position. The Y's were the ones you just saw where the hand is at 30 degrees to uh, the body. Then we're going to go to the T's which you have the thumbs facing down and they're kind of at 90 degrees to your body. Um, and then finally we move on to the P's which are this exercise here and you're kind of turning your palm to face out from you. you you will feel this exercise if you do it in your um, rear delts and obviously when you do 20 reps in total it does take the burn which is why I was not using weight for the entire movement I kind of use it for the Cuban rotations which are a little bit easier um, and then the rest of it I just use body weight uh, focusing on just building up and maintaining some good structural balance in the shoulders I'm pairing this exercise with some simple ring support holds. Um, it's a really kind of basic position, but if you want to do future ring work and if you want to keep healthy shoulders and healthy elbows, then it's a really great exercise to include. Um, it's also nice at the end, you do get kind of a bit of a chest pump because you're having to squeeze so hard to stabilize those rings. Um, but mainly this is just for maintaining balance in the shoulders with uh, a depression movement and also conditioning the biceps, which and elbows, which helps, you know, just maintaining that balance, longevity of movement, which is something that's very important to me. I was holding these for, I think, between 20 and 30 seconds um, and having some fun in between. Just finished up a 90 minute session in gymnastics. We're just gonna head over to the gym, finish up with some squats, and then that is it for the workout. So I have actually been experimenting with full body workouts lately, which is a little bit different. 
Um, and I've also been including some weighted squats, which again is something that I haven't done in quite a long time. Um, I had kind of a hip issue that I gave myself from doing a lot of aggressive hamstring stretching, like the head to toe, uh, and then also cycling to uni. It's kind of given me these tight hip flexors, so I had to do some balancing out uh, before jumping into squats again. But they're feeling pretty strong. Um, I'm kind of just playing about with them. I'm not really overly concerned. I'm just wanting to make sure I can do this basic movement pattern. Um, and then I'm going to be pairing these squats, which I'm performing for sort of four to six reps, and I'm going to be pairing it with the natural hamstring curl or the harrop curl. Again, we're going to be performing this four to six reps. This is just probably the best hamstring exercise full stop, regardless of if it's weights, body weight. This exercise is just absolutely badass, and it really helps to bulletproof kind of your entire posterior chain. Um, and a lot of people say that body weight training is, is gonna lack that posterior training, especially for the legs. Um, but this exercise is definitely amazing for compensating for that. I did a total of, I think, three sets back and forth for these ones. Again, it's nothing intense. I'm just kind of working through the patterns and throwing this at the end of my sessions uh, to make it a full body session. You know, I don't wanna lose my legs completely, but again, it's just not one of my main focus points at the moment to really be pushing the boundaries with my squat strength. I'm also testing out some Vibram five fingers, which are the toe shoes that you can see here. Um, they're really interesting. They're kind of like, I, I like to train barefoot where possible, but obviously some gyms don't like this. Um, the Feiyu's, which I've used in previous videos, uh, like a martial arts shoe, are a really great alternative. Uh, and I've used those for a number of years now, but I'm just experimenting. But that is it. We're kind of coming to the end of the workout now. I will put the whole workout in the description if you really want to check it out. And while you're down there, why not check out the Bodyweight Warrior program, which is also in the description. So there we have it guys, end of the session, end of this training vlog. What did you think of this video idea? Leave a comment down below, let me know your thoughts, opinions, I'd love to hear them. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you want to share it with a friend, go ahead. And until next time guys, have a strong week. Peace. Sky.